What's happening, everybody? On today's show, we are getting you ready for the SEC championship game as Alabama and Georgia clash on Saturday. We'll hear a little bit from both Kirby Smart and Nick Saban. We'll also talk with our buddy Dan Matthews from 680 in Atlanta. And, of course, working with the Chuck Oliver Show. We'll also go around the conference as Auburn may have their next offensive coordinator and some more players hitting the transfer portal. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are Locked On SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. Great to have you guys along. Today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Sonos is the official sponsor of ESPN College Football. Go to Sonos.com to learn more. I am Chris Gordy. Thank you guys for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. Right now, we welcome in our buddy Dan Matthews, who is in Atlanta and getting ready for this big game coming up tomorrow. Dan, welcome in. How are you, man? Very well. Hopefully the same with you. Doing good, man. Um, I- I'm so excited for this game. It's so funny because, you know, for the last two weeks, we've known this game is kind of happening. And, you know, it's like, all right, Alabama's a heavy favorite. And, you know, or, or rather, Georgia's a heavy favorite. Can Alabama even play with them? And, man, something has happened here the last couple of days where I'm reading a lot of uh, – you know, prognosticators, sports previews and all this, and everybody's starting to say, oh, I think this is a close game. I think this is a close game. So I ask you right now on the surface, will this be a close game? Well, I think it's a close game if uh, a few things happen. I mean, I think it's definitely more advantageous towards Georgia, where if they are able to play the defense that they've been playing all season long and they're able to get after Bryce Young, kind of like what we saw in the first half of the Iron Bowl last week, then it's going to be a very long day for Alabama. But I think if uh, they are able to, uh, the Crimson Tide, that is, are able to uh, get their passing game going, if the offensive line can give uh, protection to uh, Bryce Young and they can hit some shots down the field, then, yeah, I I think that Alabama could have a chance. I think the wild card here is with Georgia offensively. Can, if there is a shootout in this game, can they be up to the task and can they be able to, go nose to nose with Alabama and win that battle I think that's the question that needs to be asked uh but um you know of course too you know with with Stetson Bennett it's one of those things can he get it done in the passing game I I think that's another question that needs to be asked and so far this season I mean you know the 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 throws that he's had have been downfield it's just you haven't relied on him as much but uh, come Saturday if you have to do that I think Georgia fans are kind of uh, nervously uh, waiting in anticipation Uh, to see what happens on that front. Yeah, I think the hard time I have with talking about the possibility of a shootout here is, you know, I just look at what Georgia's done all year. They're averaging a touchdown a game. I mean, that's just, it's it's unheard of. Like, to be that dominant of a defense, you got to go back to the 2011 year where LSU and Alabama's defenses were both playing lights out. Remember the game of the century, and then they both had the rematch Mm -hmm. in in the national championship game. But, like, that caliber defense, if – Georgia does get into a shootout here on Saturday. That means their defense is laying down and not doing what they're supposed to be doing. It means Bryce Young, go ahead and give him the Heisman that day because if he's putting up, you know, 30-plus points on this Georgia defense, then he's deserving of that. Uh, I mean, do you see it that way? Like, if it's a low-scoring game, it behooves Georgia, but if it's a high-scoring shootout, then it's advantage Alabama. Absolutely it is, and I'm with you on that as well, where – you know, another chip that's going to be stacked against them is many of the Alabama people I've talked with, and Chris, I don't know about the same with you, it's not looking promising that Brian Robinson Jr. is going to play in this game. And if they don't really have a hint of a running game, that makes it even harder on Bryce Young. And, and I've said the same thing, too. You know, I did uh, an appearance on uh, local TV in Atlanta last week and, and was asked to, for my prediction in the game, and I said Georgia wins this one 27 to 10. And they said, wow, you know, that that wide open. I said, tell me how they're going to protect Bryce Young without him having to run all over the place. And even that can get old. But I said also, too, you know, people are throwing out, oh, you know, 31-24. I'm like, who has scored 24 points on this Georgia defense all season long? The answer (laughs) is none. I mean, I I think the season high, if I'm not mistaken, Chris, was, what, 24? Or, excuse me, uh, 17 from Tennessee. 
so, I mean, it, you know, the fact that that's been the case all season long just shows you this is who this defense is. And the protection issues that Alabama had last week and the struggles that they had against Arkansas, against LSU, uh, against Florida, I think that's kind of indicative of how their team is. I think they're very talented. I just think they're very young and very key spots. And I think in the spots that Georgia needs to be experienced in, they are. Yeah, it, it's a great point. And, and, you know, look, this is going to be Georgia's toughest test of the season. It's going to be Alabama's toughest test of the season. I've had some Alabama fans critical saying, oh, you know, you're not giving them the chance. You're not giving it. Look, anytime you have Nick Saban on the sidelines, you have a chance. But for if Alabama's going to win this game, they're going to have to play their best game of the season. If George is going to lose yeah. this game, they're going to play their worst game of the season, presumably. So right. it's going to take those two big parallels for that to happen. But let me bring up something because I was digging into the numbers a little bit. I, statistically, Dan, the three toughest quarterbacks that Georgia has faced this year, I chose Hendon Hooker, Will, Will Levis, and Bo Nix. All three of those guys were around 200 yards plus or minus. Of course, Will Levis had the second touchdown late. Uh, Hendon Hooker had the one touchdown. Bo Nix didn't have any touchdowns. I left off DJU because Clemson didn't do anything offensively in that first game, but they avoided the top four passers in the SEC this year. That's Will Rogers, one, Bryce Young, two, Matt Corral, three, and Max Johnson, four from LSU. They're going to see mm -hmm. Bryce Young this Saturday. This will be the toughest quarterback Georgia has faced yet this season. Yeah, but I mean, I think the other part, too, it's kind of an equalizer is that, that protection for Bryce Young. Um, we saw what happened last week when Auburn was just getting after him with four. Yeah. And Auburn's defensive front is good. They're not as good as Georgia. I mean, it, the fact that you're going to have, if I'm not mistaken, a, a, a true freshman center trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Jordan Davis, like, you know, as Cole Kubelik said when he joined us on the Chuck Oliver show earlier this week, that's not even a matchup I want to think of <laughs> if I'm Alabama. Because, I mean, you know, Jordan Davis, while the stats are not eye-popping, has been probably the most dominant defensive lineman in football this year. I mean, I understand you've got Will Anderson on the other side, but, you know, still, uh, I mean, this this is something that, that you look at with this team and, and say uh, in terms of, uh, I guess I should say front seven guys because Anderson, a linebacker, but, you know, of just people who can get after the quarterback and can cause uh, trouble in, in opponents' backfields. I mean, that's just that's something that, Really, it scares you, I think, if you're Alabama. Um, so uh, I think that, again, it's going to be imperative for them to get some sort of run game going. Um, if Brian Robinson Jr. can't go, then that can be trouble. And, and we've seen this year, too, um, other teams really clamp down on the run game and, and giving Alabama a hard time to be able to get any type of uh, offense uh, going because against very good football teams, and Georgia is a very good football team, uh, if if you're able to keep someone pretty one-dimensional, then it's usually advantage you. Talking with Dan Matthews. Dan, you're there in Atlanta. What's the buzz going to be like? I mean, do you think this will be an overwhelming Georgia crowd? We know Alabama fans travel and travel very well, and they usually show up for this game. But uh, it feels like Georgia, knowing what's on the line and what kind of team they have, that they're going to be kind of bursting at the seams. Will we have a pro-Georgia crowd on Saturday? So the only metric that I know of right now is the ticket service pick, pick uh, is uh, projecting through their analytics that it's 68% Georgia, 32% Alabama. Um, I do think it is going to be an overwhelming Georgia crowd for this game uh, just because, you know, it's funny, a buddy of mine that's an Alabama guy told me, you know, a couple of years ago when it was the national championship game. And he said, it's going to be an overwhelming Georgia crowd. I go, yeah, I mean, I get that it's in Atlanta, but why do you think he goes, dude, we played in too many of these, like people can't afford to keep shelling out a thousand dollars a ticket to go to these games. I mean, it's just, you know, or whatever the number is. I think last we saw it was like eight thirty one was uh, the number uh, for a, a modestly priced ticket to uh, this game on Saturday. But uh, there's anticipation. I mean, it, it's obviously too. I mean, you factor in uh, the Braves just doing what they just did and, and winning the world title. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who, as soon as that happened, started to say, well, the dogs are next. And uh, so I think there's anticipation. I think the question, too, to kind of go along with what you were saying there, Chris, is that it's going to be also the question of do Georgia fans go full out or do you have Georgia fans who say, uh, you know what, I I'm going to wait and, and, and spend my money on the Cotton Bowl or on the Orange Bowl, wherever they end up, and then going to Indianapolis for the national title game. 
I, I think that that's something to be seen as well. But I, I think even with that factoring in, you're going to see more red and black, and you're going to see uh, crimson and white. Last thing for you, Dan, what, uh, in your opinion, Alabama loses a close game, and let's just say, I don't know, Baylor wins the Big 12, and let's say Houston upsets Cincinnati. Does Alabama mm-hmm. deserve to be in with two losses? Well, I mean, then the Notre Dame conversation comes in, which, I mean, I think there's no coincidence why Jack Swarbrick and uh, the Irish are uh, quick to promote Marcus Freeman to head coach because I think if nothing else, um, then, you know, he and everybody else involved with Notre Dame can say, hey, we've got a head coach. Like, put us in. You know, we're, we're, we're stable. We're good to go. Uh, we got a head coach. we got our offensive coordinator, and our head coach is still our defensive coordinator. So, you know, we're good to go. So, I think if there is any possibility, like you said, Cincinnati goes down, that opens the door for Notre Dame. I, I think that any of the combination – opens the door for Notre Dame. Obviously, if Alabama pulls off the upset, they're in, and, and so is Georgia. You're not going to put out a 12-1 and Georgia team um, for, for losing a close one, uh, or even if, if you know they, they were to be absolutely just upended and, and upset in this game. Uh, so I think that uh, those three teams uh, would be spoken for, and then obviously if uh, Oklahoma State pulls off the win, uh, they're in as well. So uh, the Power Five conference winners, uh, that are still within striking distance, if they're able to handle their work, uh, then they're in. Um, if not, then it obviously does open the door for Notre Dame or uh, obviously uh, Cincinnati. Uh, it's uh, going to be paying attention to what they do against a very good Houston team as well. 11-1 uh, should be 12-0 and uh, if they didn't have that uh, toe stub early in the year to Texas Tech. So um, it's going to be uh, at least a, a fun a uh, late cup of coffee on Sunday, maybe even some uh, some brunch to uh, be able to see who the final four teams are going to be uh, for this uh, college football season. Dan Matthews, 680 The Fan there in Atlanta, of course, working with the uh, Chuck Oliver show as well. Dan, always appreciate the time, man. All right, Chris. Always good to catch up with you, buddy. All right, there he is, Dan Matthews, and uh, does a great job there. And um, excited. He's going to be in the building watching the uh, – Georgia Bulldogs versus the Alabama Crimson Tide. The funny part is, even if Alabama loses to Georgia, if you put them on a neutral field against any of those other college football playoff teams, Michigan, Cincinnati, Oklahoma State, wouldn't Alabama be a favorite over all those teams? It's crazy how it works out. All right, when we return, we are going to uh, dive a little bit deeper into this game, give you our keys to watch for for both Alabama and Georgia. And thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Of course, if you're going to be betting on the SEC championship game, you want to make sure you're doing it at betonline.ag. BetOnline has got you covered with all the props, odds, and lines that you need as football season heads into bowl season. And BetOnline remains your number one spot for all sports action throughout the bowl season. Head on over, check out their new website, updated uh, desktop or mobile website. You can sign up today, receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you sign up. Just use our promo code Locked On. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. That's going to get you your bonus from the bowl season into a college basketball fully underway now. We've got some big SEC matchups. All of it, you get in on the action at Bet Online. They are your fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. Going along here, locked on SEC, and wanted to dive right into it. We're going to go around the conference in just a little bit. Uh, sounds like Auburn maybe closing in on their next offensive coordinator. We'll get to that in a little bit, but I did want to preview a little bit more of the SEC championship game. We talked about it with our buddy Dan Matthews, so let's dive right into it. Georgia and Alabama from the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta and look this rivalry if you will between Kirby Smart and Nick Saban it's been a little bit one-sided Kirby has had the misfortune of making some boneheaded mistakes that have cost himself uh, games even in the national championship uh, against Alabama a couple years ago but I think this year is where Georgia has a little bit of the advantage there's a little bit from Kirby Smart talking this week about preparing to face a guy like Bryce Young. 
Yeah, we, I mean, you don't have a lot of options. <laughs> I mean, we go good on good, so we get to go against uh, Stetson quite a bit. Um, who's got some similarities. Uh, Bryce is just elite with his uh, touch, his accuracy, decision making. Um, he's, he's, his release is so quick. And uh, as I told our players, he's got tremendous spatial awareness. He sees the field really well. I mean, really well. So he feels things and understands where holes are in coverage. Uh, and he knows where his targets are. They've done a tremendous job uh, teaching him um, and understanding coverages of how to attack them. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's his mobility and his accuracy and his uh, quick release that make him hard to defend. My opinion, this one's very easy. If Georgia's going to win, it means that they made life very difficult for Bryce Young. Last week against Auburn, Bryce Young was sacked seven times and had his worst passer rating of the year. Of course, we know he turned it on when it mattered most in the final minute, but still, Auburn made him very uncomfortable. On the season, sacks and sacks allowed. Alabama has the third most sacks in the country. Georgia has the fourth most with 41. But sacks allowed, Georgia's second in the country at eight. Alabama all the way down at 108th in the country. Bryce Young has been, or rather, Alabama quarterbacks have been sacked 35 times this year. Georgia cannot allow Bryce Young to get comfortable back there and have a day throwing the football. If he does, Jameson Williams, John Mechie, they are going to make those DBs pay, of course, Gary and Kendrick and Keeley Ringo, two good DBs all year for Georgia. They're going to have to step up for Alabama. Man, they have got to make the big plays, obviously, offensively. If you can make this thing a shootout, advantage Alabama. But the big thing they've got to do, and they've got to limit the penalties. Alabama is actually one of the most penalized teams in the country. They rank number 118 out of 130 FBS programs, surrendering almost 70 yards per game off of penalties. That could be a killer against a, a team like this Georgia uh, defense. Alabama cannot afford big penalties in this game. Another key, do not let Will Anderson go off in this game. Look, Will Anderson has done it all season long. He leads the nation with 14 and a half sacks. He's second on Alabama in total tackles. He has the ability to take over a game. We saw it a few weeks ago in the LSU game where the offense wasn't doing much, but Will Anderson put the team on his back, stymied the LSU offense down the stretch, and kept them from getting upset by the Tigers. The other th key for Alabama here is no big plays. You want to make Stetson Bennett work for everything, and Stetson Bennett, to his credit, has done everything he's needed to do this year. It's let the game come to him. Obviously, he's turned around, hand the ball off, but he's made the plays that he's needed to when he's needed to but Alabama, you want to limit those big plays. Look, give Stetson Bennett the things underneath. Make him have to use his legs to run for first downs. He's scrappy. He's going to leave it all out on the field. We will see what he can do against this Alabama defense. For Georgia, defensively and offensively, you got to stay aggressive. Look, you can't be settling for a bunch of field goals and keep it Alabama in this game. If you've got a chance on fourth and inches to go for it, put an exclamation point put it in the end zone, score touchdowns, go do it. If you play conservative early in this game, George, and you're settling for field goals, you're asking Alabama to hang around in this one. The tough part in my mind for Alabama is going to be protecting Bryce Young. In my opinion, man, this offensive line is so banged up. Darren Dalcourt, question mark at center. Of course, he left the Iron Bowl with an ankle injury. As Dan mentioned earlier, you got Brian Robinson is questionable. JoJo Earl is questionable. So many pieces. Last week, late in the Iron Bowl, we saw Trey Sanders burst a little bit and have a little, a little push in the run game. He looked fresh, but maybe that was just fresh legs being late in the game. If Alabama's got to rely on Trey Sanders, keep in mind, he was a highly touted recruit. I think he can be effective, but probably not as effective as Brian Robinson Jr., so that will make it very difficult for Alabama and the run game. Last thing is game of field position, man. Who is going to take advantage? You've got two really good punters on both sides of the field in this one, Georgia and Alabama. So, look, go do what you got to do for a game of field position, and if you're Georgia and Alabama, come with your A game if you got your punters out there. Lastly, some of the predictions for this game. I'm looking at some of the national media 
And a lot of people are predicting a close game, as we just talked about with Dan. A lot of the vibes. Bleacher Report's predicting a Georgia 21-14 win. Sporting News, a Georgia 27-22 win. 24-7 Sports has Georgia winning 27-20. I just start to wonder, again, the Georgia defense gave up seven points a game all year. Bryce Young and Alabama are going to have to triple, quadruple that total if they're going to get a win in this game. So my prediction for the game, I'm taking a low-scoring affair, kind of like these. I'm going to take Georgia to win it 27-23. to 23. I think Alabama covers the spread, but I think Georgia's victorious, and I think Alabama loses but keeps it kind of close. And there you have it. Those are our projections for the SEC championship game. Still think Alabama's a good team. I still think they're going to go to a really good bowl game. Just the injuries, too many injuries have mounted up, and Kirby this year has just built a monster at Georgia. When we return, we're going to go around the conference. Thank you guys for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Look, the holiday season is upon us, and that means you need to be checking out our friends over at Built Bar. Grab the protein bar. It tastes like a candy bar, or is even better than a candy bar, Built Bar, filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, and high in protein. You get the best of both worlds. It's delicious and healthy. Built Bar gives you that extra fuel you need because it's the season of peace and love, don't bring up your favorite Built Bar flavor at family parties. People are so passionate about their favorite flavors, they will fight you over it, and things could get out of hand. If you are friends with Santa, well, tell Santa to throw in a few extra Built Bars into those stockings this holiday season. With so many flavors, they will make anyone's Christmas morning a happy one. If you like some of those marshmallowy treats around the holidays, you need to get your hands on Built Bar Puffs. They're light, fluffy, and marshmallowy through and through. Go check out Built.com. Make sure you use our promo code LOCKED15. You're going to get 15% off your order. Built.com slash uh, or uh, lock 15 for your promo code. It's going to get you 15% off at Built.com. Go check them out today. along here locked on sec we're kind of doing things in a reverse order today because we had our buddy dan matthews on the show but let's jump into it let's go around the conference around the conference for the second year in a row brian harson is seeking an offensive coordinator for his auburn staff last year harson had just been hired as the tigers head coach before he opted to bring in mike bobo as his top assistant Offensive assistant, rather. Bobo was let go following the conclusion of this season. So now Harson is looking for his replacement. According to Football Scoop, Harson is expected to opt for the familiar, according to sources in the profession. And that could mean turning to Zach Hill, who was his offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Boise State from 2016 to 2019. Hill has spent the last two seasons as the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Arizona State. But perhaps he would be interested in leaving to reunite with Brian Harson at Auburn. It may not be long before Harson brings somebody in. As Football Scoop says, Auburn is planning to move quickly with the hire. So whether or not Harson decides to bring back, bring in Hill, we should know one way or the other very soon on who the next Auburn OC will be. Some movement in the transfer portal after four seasons at Mizzou. Defensive lineman Jatorian Hansford. He is leaving to finish his college career elsewhere. Hansford entered the transfer portal on Thursday, bringing his time with the Tigers to an end. He appeared in 20 games over the past four seasons, collecting 27 tackles and one sack. Also saw Mississippi State linebacker Aaron Brule. He has entered the transfer portal. That's one that I know Dogs fans will not like to hear. Over at Florida, edge rusher, Lloyd Summerall has entered his name into the transfer portal. He was a four-star recruit out of the state of Florida, signed as part of the 2019 uh, recruiting class over the last three seasons. He's playing 16 games, including 11 this year. He totaled eight tackles, two for a loss, and one and a half sacks. 
Also, Florida linebacker Chris Bogle announced on social media he's entered the transfer portal. He had 22 tackles and one and a half sacks this year for the Gators. Over at Mizzou, Tyler Beatty, he led the SEC in rushing yards this year by a wide margin, by more than 300 yards over the number two rusher. He finished with a Mizzou record 1,600 yards this regular season. And Beatty's not only getting it done on the field, he's also getting it done in the classroom. Tyler Beatty won the SEC's Scholar Athlete of the Year Award, becoming the first Mizzou player to win the honor. He graduated from Mizzou this year, and his GPA is a 3.83. He also tied Alabama's Brian Robinson with rushing touchdowns at 14, but Beatty also proven himself in the pass-catching game, 54 pass uh, catches for 330 yards and four additional touchdowns. And there you have it. That is going to do it for this edition of Locked On SEC. We're going to talk to you guys on Monday, recapping all the action from the SEC championship game. It should be a good one. Look, I hope it lives up to the hype. Georgia and Alabama, best of luck to the Tide fans, best of luck to the Bulldog fans. The good news for Georgia, if you lose this game, you're still in the playoff. Bad news for Alabama fans, if you lose, I don't know if you're going to get in. You're going to need some help. And Playing at 3 o'clock, you may be watching some of those games at night to see if there's some more upsets or whatever. But good news is, if Alabama wins, you are definitely in the playoff. So, going to be a heck of a game. And I can't wait to see who gets supremacy in the SEC and gets the SEC championship title. I'm Chris Gordy. We'll talk to you guys on Monday right here on Locked on SEC. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen. Check out the Locked on Bets podcast with your boy Q and Lee Sterling giving you all the picks. In fact, sure they're going to give you a pick for the SEC championship game. Make sure you listen to that Locked on Bets. I'm Chris Gordy. We'll talk to you guys on Monday right here on Locked on SEC.